Thank you to Typology for sponsoring. More on them later. Join me for some creative homemaking in today's video. Hello everyone, Jennifer here and welcome to The Daily Connoisseur. Homemaking when viewed at as a deeply creative process, is infinitely more enjoyable, and that's what we're going to explore today. I gathered flowers from my late summer garden and have been pressing them so I can make bookmarks for my friends. The kids and I like to collect unusual flowers for the garden to press. We will press them en masse, and then have a large variety to choose from later. So over the past few weeks, I've been making bookmarks. This is a very therapeutic activity. I've poured myself a cup of tea and am continuing to listen to Henry James' The Portrait of a Lady. This is how I make them. I begin by gluing the flowers onto the paper bookmarks. Choosing the flowers that will go together in a charming combination is my favorite part. Once the glue is dried, usually overnight, I then run the bookmark through the laminator. Then I punch a hole in the top and thread the tassel through. This is a fun and easy craft. I'm not a very crafty person, but <laughs> even I can do this. So I will of course leave all of the supplies that I'm using linked down below. Creative endeavors like this are one of my favorite aspects of life at home. To preserve beauty from the garden and come up with a creative and individual way to capture it is very satisfying. I like the meditative quality that comes from the focus on this particular craft and picture the smiles that they will bring when I send these bookmarks to the people I love. These would make great Christmas presents too, by the way. And now I'm cooking one of my favorite dinners this time of year, chicken tortilla soup. I start by adding some chicken bone broth to my Le Creuset cook's oven. Then I add chopped cilantro, tomatoes, pre-cooked chicken, and scallions. I 
also add diced chilies along with salt and pepper to taste. I let this cook for about 10 to 15 minutes and then it's ready to serve. For toppings, I like to use shredded Monterey Jack cheese, chopped cilantro, chopped avocado, chopped green onions, and sour cream. To serve, I place some high-quality tortilla chips in the bottom of a bowl, ladle the soup on top, and then top it with my desired toppings. This soup is delicious and one that my whole family, especially the kids, love. I'm going to take a minute to tell you about Typology, who have kindly sponsored this video. Typology is a French skincare brand created in Paris. I love this skincare line. Their products are vegan, cruelty-free, fairly priced, healthy and effective, environmentally friendly, and 100% French. Today I'm going to share Typology's glow routine with you. This routine has been key in preventing dullness in my own skin. Their four-step routine includes the Radiance Face Scrub with Rosehip Oil, which provides gentle exfoliation while unclogging pores, their Radiance Mask with Yellow Clay and Organic Turmeric, which I have been putting on every Sunday evening as my weekend spa ritual. This mask has concentrated active antioxidants to restore radiance to the complexion. After 10 minutes, your skin texture is refined and the complexion is more luminous. Then I combine their Radiant Serum with 11% vitamin C, which illuminates dull, tired skin, and their Glow Drops with 5% vitamin C plus aloe vera, which delivers instant radiance to your complexion and builds it over time. So use my link below, and when you spend a minimum of $40, you can get a free bi-phase eye makeup remover. I know we're talking about creativity in this video, and that doesn't always mean crafting or cooking or creating something. Creativity as a homemaker can also be apparent in how you spend your downtime. I'm taking time to read tonight. I've been consciously trying to put the computer away earlier and earlier lately, and reading more and more, which has been blissful. There are several books that I tuck into over time. Books of letters and journals are the type that I don't necessarily read front to back all at once, like Dorothy Wordsworth's Grasmere and Al Foxton journals. Jesse recommended I read these, and I find them to be fascinating. I find that when I have a short time to read, and I know I'll be interrupted, it's more enjoyable to read snippets of a book like this, or of one of my books chronicling historical letters, like Henry James or Emily Dickinson. If I'm reading a novel, like with a really thick, complicated plot, sometimes I worry I might not get very far, but reading these books in small bites is helpful for me when I want to read and wind down, but I don't have much time. It's all about being creative with how I spend my downtime. Look at this beautiful bouquet of flowers that my friends from Thursday Boots sent to me after my father passed away. Darnell and Allie and the people who run Thursday Boots are some of the nicest people I've ever worked with. And now I'm going to make a slow cooker chai latte. Talk about creativity. I'm totally winging this recipe. I'm not following another one. So this is not authentic necessarily, but I can assure you it tastes great. I begin by adding hot water into my slow cooker along with a few cinnamon sticks a dash of ground cardamom, six or seven whole cloves, ground cinnamon, and about a quarter cup of sugar. Then I add about eight black tea bags. I'm using Ben's favorite tea here, PG Tips. <laughs> I let this sit for a few hours on high, and then when I'm ready to serve, I add whole milk.
When serving, make sure to strain out everything so the cup of tea is smooth and delicious. I'm going to enjoy my first cup while making a berry compote whole wheat tart. Whenever I have soft fruit that's not bad, but still not that good fresh because it's so soft, I will make it into a compote and either have it with breakfast or make a tart out of it. I sliced some soft plums and combined them in a pot with soft blueberries and blackberries and a squeeze of half a lemon and some sugar to taste. And I cover it over low heat for about five minutes. To thicken it, I add a little spoonful of cornstarch. Once thick, I let this sit and cool. Meanwhile, I'm going to make my easy rustic whole wheat crust. I've shared this with you a few times. It's so easy to make. I use one cup of whole wheat flour, a tablespoon of sugar, a quarter cup of water, and a quarter cup of olive oil. That's it. I mix it all together and press it into my Emile Henri deep dish pie pan, but you can use whatever you have. I'm using gloves here because this often gets into my fingernails and goes everywhere, so I'd just rather use gloves. I bake this at 350 degrees for 10 minutes to pre-bake it. Then I add the compote on top and I cook for another 10 to 15 minutes. I like to sprinkle pumpkin seeds on top. This is such a delicious and easy recipe. I concocted this a long time ago and make it often when I have soft fruit. And now to enjoy it with another cup of tea. In the portrait of a lady, Henry James said, There are few hours in life more agreeable than the hour dedicated to the ceremony known as afternoon tea. Well, I really do agree with that sentiment. I hope you enjoyed today's video and that it inspired you to get creative at home, whether through crafting, recipes, or resting. Thank you to Typology for sponsoring. Use my link below, and when you spend a minimum of $40, you can get a free biphase eye makeup remover. Keep calm and remain classy and creative, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Love, Jennifer.